Hi again. Uh, okay, it's time to talk about influences. This is going to be part of the art philosophy thing, but the influence today is Jim Fitzpatrick. Jim Fitzpatrick. Um, uh, most, the most famous work Jim produced was a um, t-shirt of Che Guevara. You know the the famous Che Guevara one. That was Jim Fitzpatrick that did that. I think the story was that he did that in art college, and then it just everybody printed out t-shirts because it was like super cool, and they were all left wing, whatever, nineteen seventies. Um, yeah, so that famous Che Guevara one was like that. That's Jim Fitzpatrick, bizarrely. Um, and I think he might have done it because Che Guevara, unbeknownst to many people, was Che Guevara Lynch. So I think his grandfather was Irish, hence the Jim Fitzpatrick Irish connection. Um, yeah. Anyway, the reason how Jim Fitzpatrick came to my attention. Um, I was a big Thin Lizzy fan back in the day when I went up to visit my grandmother in Kilkenny. Um, my cousin had just discovered whiskey in the jar. Now I would have been about, I suppose, 10 then, maybe, I think, I think around that time. And he had this 45, and he just kept playing it over and over and over. So it kind of gave me the ear for uh, Thin Lizzy. I think about 78, 79, I'll have to look this up, or maybe you'd look it up yourself. Jim Fitzpatrick illustrated um, Rojin Du of the Black Rose album. Uh, which again was fabulous but i kind of knew about him before then because um when i was an apprentice we we did at that time we had what was called anchor or the fast force fast program um i was training to be an electrician industrial electrician and uh we spent a year off the job and then we went back to um i trained at ahani shalom and a county limerick and the lads i were working with one of them and left and started a pub and on the wall was um, some prints that um, Jim Fitzpatrick had produced some sets of four uh, high-end art prints and what I bought one of the sets because this was on the this one Emo wife of Kilcullen let's have it you have a good look at that um, that was one of the sets that he had put up on the wall of the pub, and I was astounded. Uh, you know, I, I was absolutely amazed by the work, um, particularly that it was female and she had a really nice butt, which is always going to win with me. Um, so this book I have shows you some of like this one. Again, Lou Lampada. Um, the Irish god who eventually became Little Stooping Lou or Lou Cremorne, um, the god of tradesmen. Being an electrician, we think that's good. But you look at it, it's quite a good book actually. Um, the D Danon Press brought this out. I think you can still get it. It was twelve ninety five. I didn't pay that for it. But um, I found it occasionally, very occasionally, they turn up in, in, um, in, second-hand bookstops very very rarely now but it shows you this is how Jim starts pencil drawing pencil drawing line art and then a very slow you know, outer illustration yeah, and then coloring in I mean the work the work that went into it so obviously I like this book because he he speaks about the vision uh, of why he started uh, this sort of thing and how he went about it and etc etc now I think things like this the artists that work within are very very important to the, uh, the culture and renaissance of a people so in the 70s Ireland was going through the troubles and so on but it was coming out of its isolationist shell which was under de Valera uh, and Lynch and whatever it was coming out from under that and starting to confront the uh, inequalities of its past and its place in the world um, it was becoming less entangled with England and reasserting itself uh, and Jim was part of that with um, the Thin Lizzy particularly um, Rory Gallagher people like that and eventually all of this would lead to something like U2 and so on. Um, so the, the culture 
Um, it's also interesting that somebody like Phil Lynott, Nigerian father, Irish mother, would be seen as Irish. Not mixed race, none of that. That was never discussed. It, it, he was named and claimed, which was a great thing, I think, because it, um, he, you know, you had a real genius there with a really deep Celtic soul who um, it was just extraordinary. And you had the combination of those two guys together. The other book I have is The Silver Arm, which is uh, the book of invasions, basically. And it, and it goes into the story of Nuda Silverhand, which is why I call the company I have Silverhand and why we have the Silverhand trademark and all, all that sort of thing. So this is all, again, building into um, Nudie's Silverhand, the whole art, and building into... Uh, Let's give you something really interesting to see. Yeah, the coming of the Ildana. That's talking about the Tour de Danon, um, or the Ildana, or the that would be Lou. Lou was the champion of the um, the the Tour de Danon. Nuda was the king. Nuda had, had his arm cut off at one battle and it was refitted. It's also the Welsh legend. Um, Welsh legend, Celtic legend, and it only really exists in Ireland because the monks, sorry I've gone out of focus here, let's see if we can get it, come back, let us get into focus, try that, can you focus on that, yeah, so I can continue out of focus, let's focus the damn thing, focus, 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 uh, how do you do that, yeah that's okay, alright so we're back, we're back in frame, medium, yeah, so she struggles. But a really beautiful, beautiful book. Um, so I would advise you to like keep an eye out for this. You can still buy the prints on Jim's site, and I'll, I'll treat myself actually to a, a new set of those prints because I really, really love them. Um, yeah, so even though I didn't follow down the Book of Kells type illustration that Jim did, and I didn't go with the Irish characters, because, I mean, he'd done it so well. What what would be the point of attempting to duplicate that style when someone had done it so beautifully? Uh, so the, the perfection there. Now, Jim is more into photography these days. He doesn't do a lot of art, as far as I can, I'm aware. Um, but... Yeah, he, he's, he has legacy. There is no one like him. Um, so he's marrying Celtic influences with comic book influences with the psychedelia in there, quite a lot of psychedelia in there. Um, there's uh, visionary stuff in there. There's no one like him, you know. I mean, it's quite extraordinary, really, when you look at it, that, that, that amalgamation came in. And he's always sat at the back of my mind but that emo wife of Kukulam was what gave me the first love of, I suppose, um, the female form treated in a slightly different way, you know, very, you know, so that, that is why I love Pinup. And I would put that in the group, and so would he, I think. Uh, he loves ladies, always did, and heroic men, uh, as you can see from there. Um, yeah, so that's Jim Fitzpatrick. Probably the first influence on me artistically. I can't think other than um, some of the books I used to read, but we'll go into them another day, of the uh, the Little Grey Men Go Down the Great Stream and the Grimm's Fairy Tales and whatever, were illustrated by late Victorian artists who, who would go into another day. But Jim Fitzpatrick, uh, I think the body of work is up on YouTube. Famous for the Che Guevara thing, we all know that one. And I don't think he made any money out of that, actually. I think um, that just sort of got distributed in the, the early days. of like It's almost clip art now at this stage, but it was him. Um, and the Thin Lizzy album and that. But, I mean, he'll have a biography on his website, but I'd, I'd recommend you check it out. If you want to see somebody completely different to everybody else, a man truly inspired from the, the soil, from the um, yeah, from the folk influence, from the his own personal life, from his interests and whatever, and then you can achieve art like that. I've just showed you that. I mean, that, that's that's quite incredible, um, and I owe him 
yeah, a little, yeah, the love of, of kind of art deco work and female pinups and the whole ethos of, he introduced me to my own culture when I was a little boy in Birmingham. You know, he plugged me into my own culture, the Celtic culture, and it's not just an Irish one. I mean, it spreads into the Welsh and right across Europe, Swiss, and so on. So all Celtic people share this culture and these these stories and this ethos that uh, the ratio cultural soul, I suppose you could call it. Anyway, Jim Fitzpatrick, he's online. Um, I think it's jimfitzpatrick.com actually. Um, uh, I don't I haven't been there in ages but I'll go there immediately after this and have a look and see how he's getting on maybe order myself a set of prints with Ema wife of Coo Cullen <sighs> or tell me the story of young Coo Cullen how his eyes were dark his expression sullen and how he would fight and always won and how they cried when he was fallen then Lizzie cool <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye.